House Joint Resolution 5001, a joint resolution to apply for a convention of states under Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States to impose fiscal restraints on the federal government to limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government and to limit the terms of office for federal officials and members of Congress. HJR 5001, having had its second reading, is now for consideration in final passage. Representative Pischke. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Nearly 235 years ago, in the summer of 1787, 55 delegates from 13 independent and sovereign states gathered together in the assembly room of the Pennsylvania State House in Philadelphia, PA, for the Constitutional Convention of 1787. As a result of that convention, the founding delegates created our founding constitution. The Bill of Rights spell that spelled out our God-given rights and formed our country, the United States of America, of which many could argue is the greatest constitutional, constitutional republic ever created by mankind. The founders created a central federal government for the specific enumerated purposes of common defense, a national postal system, and Article I judges to resolve disputes between the states. These men were so concerned with, the limiting, the, with limiting the powers of the central government that they also included the Tenth Amendment at that ratification of the Constitution, which further limited the federal government's power by reserving all powers not enumerated in the Constitution to the states respectively, or to the people. Also, when the Founding Fathers drafted the Constitution, they not only understood but desired that future generations be able to amend and change certain parts of that Constitution. This is why they included sp specific provisions inside of the Constitution for how Congress or the legislatures of two-thirds of several states shall call a convention for proposing amendments. This is the language specifically inside of Article 5 of the Constitution. It might be surprising to some that something as important as changing the supreme law of the land that is outlined in, and contained in a mere paragraph as Article 5. Although there's a higher requirement for ratifying any amendment when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of several states or by conventions of three-fourths thereof, the process is not complicated. Amendments must be approved by three-fourths of states. This is partly why, even though there have been approximately 10,000 proposed amendments, only 27 were ever ratified. Nevertheless, according to the Founding Fathers' original intent, if three-fourths of the states want to change something in the Constitution, they should be able to, thus reflecting, we, the people. I believe the Constitution is a brilliant document, and the founders were inspired and led by divine providence in its drafting. Also, I recognize, just like they did, there are amendments and clarifications needed. It is no secret that the current leadership in the Congress has become so disconnected from the founding ideals and constitutional limitations placed on the federal government. To think that these leaders would restrain themselves once in power or propose amendments that solve current problems would be naive and mistaken. Fortunately, the Founding Fathers offered a solution outside of Congress. They suggested a convention for proposing, for proposing amendments, also known as a convention of states. Many today are nervous of such a convention, fearing that it might become a runaway convention and threaten the very constitutional republic that we are seeking to protect. While this fear is common, it is not grounded in a constitutional reality. There are several specific reasons. For example, Article 5 stipulates that even after the convention proposes amendments, those amendments must subsequently be ratified by three-fourths of the states. This high bar effectively prevents any opportunity for a runaway convention. An objection by a single legislative chamber in just 13 states kills an amend amendment proposed by the Convention of States. 
Furthermore, any amendments approved are required by the Constitution to be part of this Constitution. Meaning, according to the Constitution itself, a convention of states could not replace the current Constitution. Thank you. There are several historic examples where states have called for a convention to propose, to propose a specific amendment, such as the balanced budget. Interestingly, at the threshold of joining states grew close to the necessary number, Congress felt the pressure to vote on the amendment. Although the balanced budget amendment has not passed at this point, it, ser it does serve as one example that states calling for a convention can also pressure Congress to take up specific amendments that are a concern to the people. It's for this reason, and for many more, that I support a convention of states, and I humbly ask for your support today on HJR 5001. Thank Mr. You. Speaker, all members have voted. Please display the vote. Mr. Speaker, there were ayes th 39, nays 30, excused 1. HGR 5001, having received an affirmative vote of the members elect, hereby declared passed. I'm here live in Philadelphia at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. When you hear the phrase, lives, fortunes, and sacred honor, these are the folks we should think of, those who anonymously gave their lives. Well, today you have a chance to volunteer. You need to volunteer for conventionofstates.com, the movement that's going to save the country. These folks were willing to step up and give everything we need you to give just a little bit. Go to conventionofstates.com and volunteer today. 